CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Welcome back. You're watching CNBC TV 18 Weekender, and we are in conversation with Parth Jindal. Uh, Parth, you're perhaps one of the most candid people I've met. So I'm, I'm going to ask straight up: Does uh, what is the one thing about your father that uh, daunts you? What's that one thing about your father when you work with him that scares you? So <laughs> when he when he goes into costing, yeah. so when he calls me and he asks me to come to his cabin and he's like, so how much was your cost last month? And that scares me because if I don't you remember know, it, I do I do remember it I do remember it. But if I don't remember every single detail of what the power cost was, how many units got consumed, what was the mining cost, what was the cost of labor, what was my fixed cost overhead, how much money was spent on branding and marketing, uh. I'm done. So he says, <laughs> So that is when I get really scared. So I think it still scares a lot of people in the group. Okay. Uh, when, he asks, when he does a costing review, that day the office is shivering. Oh, why? And what, what is the one thing that inspires you or the one lesson that you have seen while growing up that you are implementing now? So I think what really inspires me about my dad is that he's grown this group so much in the last two decades. You know, we were, uh, you know, there's a, there was a time when we couldn't even imagine being uh, as big or we couldn't even imagine ever growing to the scale of Tata Steel and today we're bigger than Tata Steel in India. And during this entire journey of you know, 20 years or, you know, 30 years since he started the JSW group, the fact that he's maintained his work-life balance and the fact that on the weekends he would spend, you know, a quality time with my sisters and me, he would take me for squash, take us for movies, take us for holidays, you know, that's really inspired me. And also the, how he's integrated my mom, my mother into the group, how she, you know, has left her imprint on everything, whether it's this office, whether it's our factories, whether it's our townships. I think the way, you know, he's involved the family in building this group uh, really inspires me and that's something that I really want to, you know, replicate in my life. You know, does it put more pressure on you being the son of Sajjan Jindal when you're at JSW? Is it difficult when you go to talk to people? Does that, is, is it challenging ever? No, so, so you know, it, there, is a, there is a huge role model and yep. there, is, there, is a, there is a lot of comparison that keeps happening. Uh, that you know does it daunt you ever the comparison no it does it's 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 uh, it's difficult to to uh, you know if i if i can be 50% of him i think i'd be successful mm. but uh, at the same time like he's given me enough freedom uh, he's given me complete control of the cement company he's given me complete control of the sports venture of the venture capital fund of the us plant you know, now we're getting into paints, so he's given me complete freedom on that. And he doesn't uh, micromanage me. He expects me to give him a report on a monthly basis. And at home, sometimes we discuss it over dinner. Mm. But, uh, you know, he, he, he's given me freedom. Mm. And he says that, you know, the only way you will learn is if you can grow the businesses on your own. Mm. And I don't want to be, you know, a godfather over you. I want you to grow. I want you to make mistakes. That's the only way you will learn. Yeah. And whenever you need advice, whenever you need guidance, please come to me. Okay. So, because he's given me that ability, and I don't think a lot of fathers do that, um, you know, it's not as daunting uh, as it could have been if, uh, if, if I was working directly under him or I was being directly evaluated on a weekly basis by him, yeah. then it would be difficult. So, yeah. he's like, your success is your own. If you can grow this cement business, mm -hmm. today we are very small. He said that, you know, I want you to challenge Ultratech one day. Really? Um, I, in paints, he's like, I won't, uh, you will only be successful if you can compete with Asian paints. Wow. And uh, he said this in, you know, board meetings, he said this everywhere that uh, I can, if I can beat Tata Steel, why can't you beat Ultratech or why can't you beat Asian paints? So that is, that, when he says those things, it's daunting. But uh, I, I have enough uh, belief in my ability that I can do that. You can do that. Okay, so this is a perfect time to talk shop. Uh, the one thing that you have been very closely situated uh, and uh, engaged with is the U.S. business. Uh, unfortunately, in the last three years, the economy has been brutal almost. Yeah. How have you worked towards turning around the U.S. operations and what is the vision there? What's the long-term plan right now? So, so I think with the U.S. plant, it's more of a structural issue. When we took over the plant in 2007 and, you know, the economy was a different uh, economy. The steel prices, whether it was for plate or pipe, were cross, you know, were over a $1,000 a ton for plate and over $2,000 a ton for pipe. So the margins were astronomical. 
and then obviously the financial crisis happened and you know the entire economics of that plant changed for the plant to improve money needs to go in and for that currently we're talking like i mentioned to private equity firms if a private equity firm does come in jsw steel is willing to also put in capital uh, but we would not be willing to put in capital without private equity firm to fund the entire thing so how much capex is required right now roughly 150 million dollars you know jsw steel has been one of the contenders who hasn't shied away from acquisition hasn't shied away from going aggressive with growth is that the same uh, quality that you'll apply with cement so i think right now if we go and try to make an acquisition the valuations are going to be very steep yeah. we saw that with the uh, lafarge transaction that nirma did yeah. we we tried to get that but you know they just went a little bit higher than us okay. so by uh, 2018 jsw cement will become a 17 million ton cement company and then my aim is to take this 17 million to 30 million by 2020 2020 by 2020 so that's so that huge, that can only happen very steep target that's very steep that that's how we that's how we have to go it's jsw otherwise uh, it's not a jsw company all right a good time to take a break then we'll go catch some fresh air as well see you on the other side of this very short break